The biggest clue that SpaceX is getting close to the next Starship flight is Ship 39. It's now fully stacked inside Mega Bay 2, covered almost entirely with heat shield tiles, and from the outside it already looks like a finished spacecraft. Over in Mega Bay 1, Booster 19 is coming together at a surprisingly fast pace as well. It recently received a major internal component, showing that SpaceX isn't just assembling hardware quickly. They're actually making steady, meaningful progress behind the scenes. To understand why this pace matters, it helps to look back at how slow the early Starship flights were. When SpaceX first started flying the full Starship system, the gap between launches was enormous. Starship's first integrated flight happened on April 20, 2023, but the second flight didn't take place until November 18, 2023, almost seven months later. Then, even after SpaceX improved processes and the FAA reviews became smoother, the rhythm didn't immediately pick up the way many people expected. Flight 3 launched on March 14, 2024, roughly four months after Flight 2. That was still a long wait especially for a company aiming to fly Starship like an airline someday. But then SpaceX hit a turning point. Flight 4 took place on June 6, 2024, just three months after Flight 3. And then came the real acceleration. Flight 5 launched on September 8, 2024, only about 94 days later. For the first time, people started saying SpaceX was finally finding its launch cadence, but the trend didn't last. Flight 6, which launched on November 20th, 2024, came about two and a half months after Flight 5. A small slowdown, but nothing dramatic. Then the schedule stretched again. Flight 7 didn't happen until March 15th, 2025, putting the gap at nearly four months. And since then, each flight has had its own delays. Hardware checks, booster upgrades, FAA reviews, and pad modifications. SpaceX clearly wants to fly more often, but real engineering setbacks slow things down. And that brings us back to the story of Booster 18. Originally, SpaceX was aiming to fly again around this time of year. The plan was for the new Starship version 3, Ship 39, to launch on top of the upgraded version 3 Super Heavy Booster, Booster 18. But everything changed on November 21st. During a routine pressure test at Massey, Booster 18's LOX tank suddenly ruptured. The failure ripped open a huge section of the structure, and the damage was so severe that nothing could be saved. SpaceX had no choice but to cut the entire booster apart and remove it from the test site. On December 5th, the last remaining piece was finally lifted away, clearing the area for the work that needed to follow. With Booster 18 gone, SpaceX immediately shifted focus to Booster 19, because delays at this stage could affect almost every major milestone planned for 2026. SpaceX's goals for the coming year are huge, establishing a reliable path to orbit, attempting the first orbital refueling demonstration. And this depends on staying on schedule. On December 7th, SpaceX brought in one of the most critical pieces of hardware for Booster 19, the massive propellant transfer tube. This tube runs straight down the center of the booster and is responsible for feeding liquid oxygen to the engines during flight. What makes it so impressive is its size. The tube has a diameter of roughly 3.6 meters, which is almost the same diameter as an entire Falcon 9 first stage, which measures 3.7 meters across. In other words, a component that would practically be a whole rocket on its own is just one internal part of Super Heavy. SpaceX usually installs the tube only after multiple rings are stacked and aligned, because even small alignment errors can cause fit issues. The fact that it slid into Mega Bay 1 at this stage means the welding work on the lower sections is already extremely precise. This is especially important for Block 3 boosters, since they use a lighter, stronger steel alloy and tighter tolerances than Block 2. Any mistake at this stage could delay the whole build. Once the transfer tube is lowered into place, the crews will begin attaching the common dome, one of the booster's main internal bulkheads. The common dome separates the liquid oxygen tank from the liquid methane tank, while remaining strong enough to handle pressures that can exceed 6 bar during testing. 
The welding alone for this dome usually takes several days because it must pass X-ray inspections to verify structural integrity. When the cryogenic tests are completed, Booster 19 will be rolled back into Mega Bay 1 to begin the final outfitting phase. This stage of the build is where the booster starts looking like a flight-ready vehicle rather than a bare steel structure. The first major components to be installed are the grid fins. Block 3 boosters, like B-19, use three grid fins instead of the traditional four found on earlier Super Heavy versions. Each fin is made from thick steel, weighs roughly 1,500 to 1,800 kilograms, and stands almost 4 meters tall. These fins control the booster during descent, helping it orient itself as it heads back toward the tower or the ocean. Once the external hardware is in place, the most time-consuming, and arguably the most crucial part begins, installing the Raptor engines. Booster 19 will be equipped with 33 Raptor 3 engines, the newest and most powerful methane-fueled engine SpaceX has ever produced. Each Raptor 3 generates around 330 tons of thrust, meaning the full engine cluster will produce more than 10,000 tons of thrust at liftoff. That's roughly 22% more thrust than the previous Raptor 2 engines. Installing the engines is one of the hardest parts of building the booster. SpaceX can't just attach them quickly. They have to install each Raptor 3 engine one at a time. A small crane lifts the engine into position, and technicians guide it very slowly so it lines up perfectly with the mounts. The reason they take so much care is because everything has to fit with almost no room for error. Some of the pipes and connections inside the engine bay only have a few millimeters of space to spare. If an engine is even slightly off-center, it can cause problems when the engines start up or when fuel begins flowing at high pressure. Ship 39 has also been moving forward much faster than expected. The last time it was clearly visible in mid-November, it was still in big pieces. Large steel sections lined up inside Mega Bay 2, waiting to be stacked together. At that stage, it looked like the early days of a long build process. But on December 8th, everything looked completely different. Ship 39 was now fully stacked from top to bottom. The nose cone, the midsections, and the tail section were all welded together into one smooth structure. What stood out even more was the heat shield. Almost the entire windward side was already covered in tiles. These tiles are the same thermal protection system type used on Block 2 ships, but on Block 3 they are mounted using an improved attachment system that helps reduce tile loss during flight. Ship 39 now has well over 15,000 heat shield tiles installed. When they're all in place, the ship gets that dark, glossy look that makes it appear almost like a different vehicle compared to earlier versions. What makes this progress even more impressive is the timeline. Real assembly work for Ship 39 didn't even begin until mid-August, when its nose cone rolled from the Star Factory into Mega Bay 2. From that moment to the fully stacked vehicle we see now, it's been only about four months. For comparison, some earlier Block 1 and Block 2 ships took six to eight months to reach the same level of completion, and those versions had fewer upgrades and simpler internal layouts. Ship 39 isn't just another repeat of the previous design. It is the first upper stage built to the full Block 3 standard. Block 3 is expected to be more reliable and more reusable than Block 2. Ship 39, like all Starship upper stages, stands around 50 meters tall and 9 meters wide, making it the largest rocket upper stage ever built on Earth. It holds more than 1,200 tons of cryogenic fuel when fully loaded. Yet, despite its massive scale, SpaceX managed to assemble it faster than almost any previous Starship. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.